Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Better Call Saul Season 6, Episode 6, Axe and Grind. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Better Call Saul, so I have to start with a spoiler warning for Better Call Saul up to Season 6, Episode 6, if you have not seen up to this point. You will not want to watch this video, otherwise some things will be spoiled for you. So this was the penultimate episode of the half season, <laughs> next week is the mid-season finale. So we break for several months after next week's episode before we get to the rest of the season. So I do feel like they are playing this off as uh, I think next week's episode will probably be a finale of sorts. So this felt like the build up to that, the setup for that. And so this episode I felt was felt like an incomplete episode because it felt like it was just building up to next week's episode. Which again, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it was a good setup. Uh, always interesting to see these characters, but uh, I really want to get to the story. Uh, it's hard because a lot of this episode dealt with uh, Kim and uh, Saul like um, preparing for their plan, um, but I'm still not sure exactly what their plan is. Um, so it's, uh, and they haven't revealed it yet. Uh, and so, so nothing really happened in this episode except for maybe with Lalo that was kind of important but even that was kind of just set up so it's mostly just setting up which again nothing wrong with it but I kind of oh I so want to see in the next week's episode anyway so the opening scene we get in this episode is a flashback of Kim as a kid it's very interesting now at first I when I well, first watched this scene I read it as her mother had set her up to, there was like they were playing a con and they were purposely trying to steal but then when I watched the scene again I actually got the impression that Kim actually did steal of her own volition but then when the mother found out she was kind of okay with it and was just playing the upset mother but really was going along with stealing it I think that was the the I think that's yeah the more accurate interpretation but either way it shows that Kim was actually no stranger to doing cons, um, that she had done it at a very young age and had a very questionable mother. Now, we know from previous episodes with Kim that she doesn't think fondly of her parents and her background um, and wanted to get away from her family um, and wanted to be legit. And, but it seems like this is why she has this familiarity with the con world that uh, Jimmy introduced her to because she was uh, he did it from a young age was I which I think actually adds a lot of character a lot of flavor to Kim's character he sort of puts things in a in a different perspective um, so then uh, when we go back to uh, present day <clears throat> we see that uh howard is uh consulting with the um private detective he put on on saul and he hasn't really uh doesn't really have anything all the information he has is kind of minute normal everyday stuff except for seeing him go to the bank to withdraw uh, large amounts of money which uh, Howard is looking at as a smoking gun. Now, as I said in the previous week's episode, they left me with the impression that they are still playing Howard and that they wanted Howard to go after, to be aware of the, what they were doing. And so I feel like this is also all part of the plan, um, whatever that. Maybe someone really smart watching this show has figured out their plan. <laughs> I have not. Um... So I think um, the f because we later see that Saul is up to all sorts of shenanigans. He's just hiding it, like in his back office. He has the, you know, the film students. Great to see them again. Finally, their first parents this season. Uh, the, where they show up and they they have uh, taking pictures of uh, this guy who's impersonating the judge that they mentioned in the previous episode. Again, all part of their plan, which I still don't know exactly what it is. Um, so he is doing shady shit, but he's hiding it. And also, we saw him like giving, 
getting Francesca to call and ask when this certain sandpiper meeting is, and he's doing that in the back alley as well. So, as far as the private detective knows, he's in his office doing work and meeting like with clients, but he's like keeping it hidden, hush hush, what they're uh, that he's actually doing. So the fact that he withdrew all that money in plain sight of the detective makes me think that, uh, or the PI, I should say, makes me think that, um, that he did that on purpose, that he wanted Howard to see that. Uh, now, why exactly? <laughs> as I said, no clue. I was going to say your guess is as good as mine, but then again, your guess might be better than mine. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, so... So we also get a scene where Saul and Kim go to the vet that we've seen uh, and throughout the whole series who apparently has criminal connections to the underworld or whatever. Uh, and uh, again, they do something which I don't know what. <laughs> something that had to do with a ridiculous amount of caffeine. Um, and uh, that's going to make Saul feel weird. But again, it has something to do with their plan, which again, I have absolutely no idea what it is. But the important thing is, is that we see that this vet uh, decides that he's sick of um, being in this criminal world and wants to become legit and so he's going to move from Albuquerque so he can start a legitimate veterinary practice without doing any of this shady underground shit anymore uh, which makes sense because we never see this character in Breaking Bad but he has this mysterious black book that has all of the you know all of his, the names of his connections and he is Saul's like oh can I see it he's like oh yeah sure and he gives him the book and it's all in code and he's like well you think I'm just gonna write out all the names and, and plain uh you know for anyone to read now <clears throat> if I recall correctly um, I believe this is the same book Saul has in Breaking Bad. Now, someone probably pointed out in the, in the comments, it's funny because it wasn't that long ago since I watched Breaking Bad. I just watched it like the whole series less than a year ago. Yeah, I think, I'm not positive, but I think Saul had that exact same black book that was also in code. Uh, and we see him talk about it, but so apparently he is going to acquire it from this vet and the code in order to decode it somehow. Uh, how exactly that happens, I don't know, but then we also get the fun little Easter egg of the um, card for the vacuum cleaning repair shop uh, the disappearer. Um, so, yes, that is. Um, very interesting stuff uh, and so that helps if he gets acquires this book somehow and kind of takes over for this vet that explains how he has all these freaking connections in breaking bad because that's the one thing i noticed that saul knew pretty much everyone and um he jimmy in this show so far did not so if he acquires this book and makes all the contacts and that will explain how he got it so uh that was interesting as well um yeah we see kim meet with uh cliff and cliff is actually presents this really legitimate uh deal for her that could seriously help her business but it had the meeting happens to be the same day as uh with their big scam whatever it is <laughs> um and, and so, uh, and, and then, you know, Saul's like, oh, it's all, it's all good, it's all okay, we can do, you do your thing, I'll do my thing, it will be fine, it will all work out. And then, of course, we see at the end of the episode, it doesn't all work out because Saul runs, and he's going to buy, like, that expensive tequila, the one that they scammed that broker guy into buying them out, and I think season two that was, uh, and they still keep that little, um whatever you call it, the top thing that's sharp and he wants to buy another one that's like five hundred dollars but uh of course he puts it down and freaks out when he runs into that same judge that they're impersonating and finds out that he does in fact uh have a cast on his arm and is cast in a sling because he broke his arm which fucks up their plan whatever it is but apparently fucks up their plan because all the pictures they have of him he is very visibly very clearly not wearing a cast so whatever those pictures are there are dependent on being recent 
I guess, because uh, that's how, the only way they would completely ruin their plan. Uh, and so, you know, Saul's like, well, it's a good thing we caught it because we would have been fucked. It, well, he, does, he said they would have sunk us for sure. Uh, but now that they know it, they can abort and try something else later. But Kim's like, like, what are we going to try later? And he's like, I don't know. We'll, we'll think about it. We'll regroup tonight and we'll come up with something else. But then, you know, she thinks about it and you see her make a sharp U-turn. It's like, no, this goes forward today. So very interesting that and again that's kind of a flashback set up like kim's kind of mindset that she is passing on a huge huge legitimate opportunity uh to make her pro bono business grow to help people so she's setting that aside she's prioritizing conning howard and getting the sandpiper money over having because she, her Stated purpose for wanting the sandpiper money was to help her purpurina practice, but here she could have a legitimate way to fund her purpurina practice through legitimate means, and she is passing that up in order to make sure that her con works. So it kind of it tells you more about Kim's character and where her priorities lie. And even though you think, oh, she's a great person helping people, well, we see that she's actually deprioritizing that she's putting that to a side and prioritizing conning howard because i think it's personal honestly i think her grudge against howard it's funny because when cliff uh, and earlier asked her what she felt of howard she's like oh i owe everything to howard uh, you know really appreciate them very clear i mean not to cliff but it was very clear to the audience that she was full of shit uh, i think she has it in for howard but anyway so earlier we get uh, a scene with Francesca, and again, this is leaning more towards because we have the Francesca and Breaking Bad has a very surly disposition, a very antagonistic relationship towards Saul, and in the earlier seasons of, of, um, of Better Call Saul, she's very chipper and happy, and so we see she has that sort of still chipper happy demeanor but it's starting to be slowly chipping away and we see that she's getting really agitated with the, with the stuff that Saul's asking her to do especially when we saw that guy peeing <laughs> and the thing he's like go oh, clean up on aisle five and she's like clean it up yourself and and she's getting real pissy at him for making her call uh you know the hhm and pretend to be something else but we see in breaking bad she actually does that Willy nilly, we see her several times like call, uh, pretending to be someone else, and of course she, you know, does it for the money. So in, in better in Breaking Bad, she's very callous and like just giving the money, and and here we see her how she's leaning towards more of that demeanor. Also, we see a lot of you know, like that pe guy that was pinging the thing, and a lot of the surly disposition people uh, in the waiting room. We're probably going to see what's going to lead to French to request having like that booth and the buzzer that stops people from coming in i wonder if we're gonna get like an incident where someone's gonna get violent that's gonna lead her to want to do that or maybe things won't get that bad and also of course uh we know eventually they're gonna hire huel as a bodyguard so that's what also makes me think that something violent is going to happen that's gonna lead her to you know freak out and uh and Maybe even Saul is going to freak out and hire Huel uh, as a bodyguard. But things, I think, definitely going to get worse. But of course, you know, the place looks a lot better than it did in the previous episodes, but it's still not uh, where it was to Breaking Bad yet. So we know there's, there's still a few more things that can happen uh, in that regard. So um, we also get the stuff with Mike. Um, this episode, which again, not much really happened. Would you see, you know, I can't even remember that one dude, not Victor, but the other one that he was arguing with them. was like, we really need these people eyes on Alameda. And he's like, no eyes on Alameda stay. And we find out Alameda street is where his, um, daughter-in-law and granddaughter live. And so he's more worried about protecting them than he is himself. Which makes sense, but again, 
it's not really much traction. Although I do like what he said to the guy where he was like, you know, if the boss referring to Gus, if he has a problem with me, he, he knows where to find me. And if you have a problem with me, well, I'm right here. <laughs> uh, you know, this classic Mike stuff. But um, yeah, still not much traction. Now, as I said, the Lalo stuff was probably the most interesting for me because it shows... If, that in the previous episode I didn't know what exactly he had found but it made it clear he found the that little thingy <laughs> um I think someone's in the comments told me it was a slide rule that um that it was a gift from one of um Werner's men and so um that's what so um Lalo was able to track him down so this is obviously one of the men I don't know if I recognize him but I assume it's one of the men who worked in uh, for Werner in um, when they were building the underground lab for Gus so he was able to track him down uh, in the cabin it was a really intense scene because you thought that you saw that guy like hit him with the axe he must have, must have hit him with the blunt side of the axe because he wasn't stabbed but he said that he, he felt like he had a ribs broken but of course Lalo got the better of him and was able, able to um, get the advantage and we see him holding the axe saying now we're going to find out so he's obviously going to probably get the information out of this guy whether or not he lets the guy live is another question but he obviously is going to get the information out of him on what exactly went down and so he's going to return uh, to the states to try to use that information against Gus um, but of course we know that's not going to work because we know in Breaking Bad the cartels still have no idea <laughs> about this underground laboratory. Uh, so where this is leading, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but, uh, yeah, that was, um, pretty interesting. So, um, yeah, my rating for Axe and Grind, um, out of... 10 I, again i'm gonna give this a seven um very good uh, again the good stuff love seeing these characters is good build up but again it only felt like part of the story i just really i'm still like oh what is their plan i want to know what their plan is so badly and how it's gonna happen and what's gonna happen with howard and all this oh i just can't wait to see the next episode. Anyway, so that is it for my review of episode 6 of Better Call Saul. Be sure to check out my channel as I continue to review Better Call Saul, as well as reviewing other shows like Star Trek Strange New Worlds, and in fact all sorts of Star Trek shows, and other shows like uh, Star Wars Clone Wars, um, The Expanse, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that, and thanks so much for watching.